I'm the home slice, Ascend Hyperion, and this video is actually my 30th delve into the design of Halo games. <laughs> to celebrate, I let my subscribers toss out design elements of the Halo franchise they'd like me to talk about. Many of the suggestions are actually pretty good, and several will warrant videos in the future for sure, but for this video, I decided to pick the topic that I thought would be the most quirky and potentially thought-provoking to discuss. Similar to when we discussed the unintentional drawbacks of dual wielding, or when we explored how custom loadouts in Halo were weakening the gameplay foundation, today's topic is another one focused on how good intentions yielded bad results. Today I want to talk about how the Spartan laser effectively neutered the vehicle sandbox in Halo, and how its nearly 14 year long reign of terror in Halo is long overdue to come to an end. We'll discuss how a single weapon acted as a hard and fast nerf to an entire functional sandbox, and by the end of this video, perhaps you too will believe the Spartan laser should never return to Halo. Don't miss my viewer question at the end, follow me on Twitter, and let's get this started. So before we discuss how the Spartan laser inflicted some serious hurt on the vehicle sandbox, we need to get a good baseline understanding of how Halo's vehicle sandbox works. The vehicle sandbox is auxiliary and complementary to the Halo gameplay experience. By this, I mean the core arena experience in Halo is not dependent on vehicles to be fully functional, but to that same regard, the vehicle sandbox is designed in such a way where it is also naturally included in gameplay. The way each Halo game pulls this off is by having the vehicles offer players advantages to damage, health, and mobility, often in two categories, if not all three. The changes to damage and health are some of the most important. Similar to how players will seek stronger and stronger weapons on a map, vehicles often act as what I call Tier 4. Vehicles like the Scorpion, Wraith, Banshee, Wasp, Phaeton, and Mantis <laughs> offer players higher levels of damage potential than they could ever get naturally, and that usually comes with a significant boost to your health as well, because of the protection the vehicle provides. Now, what's important to understand is that this condition is absolutely essential to making sure the vehicle sandbox is properly integrated into gameplay. Even a vehicle as weak as the Mongoose is desirable by players because of its additions to mobility, just one single category. In Halo, for players to pursue any action, it must bring them power. But even a powerful item will be neglected by the player if it fails to be consistent in its power delivery. A good example of this condition is Halo 3's Flamethrower, which has a crazy high damage potential and multi-kill potential, but because the weapon has a terrible functional range on top of making you slower and the fact that you're likely to off yourself in the process of using it made it so it wasn't used as much by players, not as much as you would expect. So with everyone now carrying a crash course expertise in vehicles, we're probably prepped to talk about how the Spartan laser messes everything up. By the way, if you want me to talk about Halo's vehicle sandbox in the future, leave a like below and let me know in the comments. Alright, so the Spartan Laser. Introduced in 07 with Halo 3, the Splazer is actually one of the most functionally unique weapons in Halo, as it delivers enough damage to kill any standard player and most vehicles, unlike rockets, instantly. This near instant damage delivery is a really important factor, and ultimately a flaw of the Spartan Laser. Now I've explained once or twice in this channel that weapon range is a crucial element of gameplay, and that the gameplay experience suffers when players are allowed to fight from far distances. The major issue with the Splazer is that since its damage delivery is near instant, and because it's equipped with the sniper quality range and a single zoom lens, it offers players the opportunity to kill vehicles without ever actually having to enter a fight, let alone be close to it. This is fun and all for the person wielding this blazer, because it makes them feel big and strong, but the implication on the sandbox is starkly negative. With the knowledge that a splazer can be lurking basically anywhere, players are forced to either avoid using vehicles until the splazer can be killed, or they have to risk being killed nearly instantly. This is a massive difference from the lock-on ability of rockets, which at the least featured travel time and could potentially be maneuvered around. 
The further problem is that the coordination to locate and then confirm an enemy Splazer user has been killed requires team comms, which you're not going to get in random matchmaking. What's more, even if the original user is killed, there's no guarantee another enemy won't just grab the laser and put the leash back on the vehicles. Even if your team grabs it, the leash is still there, it's just for the other team now. If you're playing on a map with a laser present, you are now subject to being potentially picked off at any moment, with no warning, often with no chance of fighting back or defending against the onslaught. One weapon neuters what is supposed to be some of the most functionally desirable tools in Halo Sandbox by stripping them of their key benefits to the player. Extra health? Doesn't matter. Extra firepower? Doesn't matter. Extra mobility? does not matter. Right now, I'd imagine a few people are thinking, okay, but the Splazer is good for taming runaway banshees and vehicle sprees. How can the Splazer be all that bad? Well, the issue is, yeah, you're right. The Splazer is great for keeping high payout vehicle runs from happening. That's because it's great at keeping any type of vehicle run from happening. Its check on the vehicle sandbox is overcorrective and holds so much power that rather than maintaining balance in gameplay, it puts a vicious stranglehold on it. It's worth noting how the Splazer drifted out of popularity in matchmaking BTB in later games, often in favor of the lock-on rockets that were thankfully added back starting in Halo Reach. And by the time we got to Halo 5, the Splazer was almost entirely relegated to Warzone and Custom modes. I don't think the Splazer should see a reiteration in Halo Infinite. I think in order to have a fully blossomed vehicle gameplay experience, there has to be an allowment for those vehicles to play their tier 4 roles. They should be allowed to be strong and versatile, because that's what makes them appealing to the player. The mistake is confusing power for imbalance, and then demanding a check on that power. It's like having a car that can easily top 200 miles per hour, then governing it to 60 miles per hour. Is it safe? Yeah, sure. But is it fun? No, not like it could have been. So while you're thinking about it, let's hit today's viewer question. What vehicle do you think suffered the most under the reign of the Spartan Laser, and why? Like always, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more and be sure to leave a like on this video. Until next time, I'll catch y'all later.